and welcome back everyone for the back half of the 2017 Green Mountain Championships opening round at Brewster's Ridge. We got Ricky Wysocki, Simon Lazat, Drew Gibson, and Nate Sexton. We're heading into the back nine during the first round of my one camera bonus card action. Simon Lazat finds the upper ceiling here to open up the back nine. That's going to leave him in the center of the fairway, but on a very, very drivable hole. We see some struggles out of the first two throws. Wysockis gets up and turns over on him, continues to carry to the right. Drew Gibson well, finds the left side of the fairway. A little tree kick for insult over there. Nate Sexton might be able to dial it in with the forehand. However, it doesn't flip up and turn on him. And that's carrying hard right over by Waisaki territory. Simon can give this a really long run. But he's going to sit next to the basket and just have to walk away with a par. Drew fighting from the left side rough. Puts it up there within putting distance. Waisaki known for his super long putts. Not the effort we're used to seeing from Ricky. Sexton. Oh, mm. on, Just a bit offline. So it looks like four competitors not loving hole 10 here today. Drew will be first to tap in. He's going to walk away with a par. Sexton's got a little bit of cleanup here. He'll walk away now with the par. Very calm conditions out there. Ricky scoops up his mini. Him and Simon are in. Four pars. Not impressive. Whoa! Simmer down there, Simon. See, he almost falls on his face. Simon retains the tee after everyone pars the previous hole. That one's going to be tight to the right. Probably. And they're giving him a hard time saying that sometimes Simon gets very lucky. He throws shots that somehow find fairways. That one's going to be off to the right side of the fairway. 615 feet here on this par 4. And placement is paramount. Drew was hoping to miss left. However, that kick may save him a stroke or two by it kicking to the right side into the fairway. Not a bad kick there for Sexton as well, throwing his super dyed orc that he's got. And Simon going for the hero shot. Not converting. Simon again throwing. And this is a beautiful shot that's tracking down toward the basket. He's going to be to the right of it. Drew has to go with a standstill. The footwork is a little bit challenging there. A lot of these rocks and hillside can affect your footing. We see Nate Sexton having to do the same. He's lining up another forehand. And the one time you wanted to hit a tree, that carries way right. Nice. Did not realize that there was a ravine type area down there. Waisaki is looking from long range with his famous harp. And he tickles the chains. What a run by Waisaki for Eagle. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Drops a towel. His pal Drew Gibson's there to help pick it up. This is Lasat for his four. Not so much. And again, finding that right side ravine area that I didn't even know existed. And after Waisaki tickles the chains for the eagle, he makes the long comeback. Still walks away with the birdie. 
Drew Gibson also cards the birdie. That's exactly how you want to play this hole. And we see Lazat and Sexton both moving into the basket. Lazat's got a little cleanup. I believe that he's going to walk away with a bogey five. And Sexton's going to have to settle for the par. Hole 12, I move to the catch area. Another blind shot. Players cannot see the pin. It's tucked down and to the left. Hence, I'm standing about halfway down the fairway to try and catch the shots at the swing. That's a good-looking shot by Drew. Again, almost too good. You wish it would have caught a late tree. It doesn't. He goes even further than I thought he did. And Sexton, with a great line, puts himself just a few feet from the pin. 360 feet, plays probably closer to 320 at most. And Lazat is going to love that effort and result. Drew from way back. And the Raptor legs were warming up. Ricky just feels like he can't catch a break. Sexton says, I'll take the birdie. A little clean up here for Drew. Again, goes deep. Just when you think maybe you could get a tree to slow it down, it doesn't happen. Lazat in for the easy tap in. Ricky will take a par. He doesn't like pars. We're moving on. Five hundred and fifty five feet. You have a very tight tunnel, and you really want to get up. Just about where Nate Sexton is throwing it there. And Simon slips on the tee. Everyone make sure that he's all right. Tees were just a bit wet. It didn't rain. As you can see, the sun is out, but sometimes they can be a little bit slick. Not a lot of sunshine in certain parts of that course. And Drew, well, Drew's footing wasn't ideal for him. He throws a great recovery shot here that's heading up toward a pin. I believe the pin's been moved back since last year. It seems to be a little bit tougher. And Simon's going to try and fight through the right side fairway. Only with uh, mediocre results there. And somehow Ricky laces one down that fairway, uh, or should I say the rough on the right side, finds himself carrying past it. Simon's looking at a similar route. Trying to fight his way up toward the basket to get the three. Nate Sexton with one of the greatest drives you could possibly throw. I got so lucky. <laughs> and then he tells you, I got so lucky. He completely shanks his approach shot, as he says. And Drew's got to get creative. This is a minute after he had contemplated which way he needed to throw it. He was looking at forehands and overhands. Wysocki's got a long look at birdie. And doesn't convert on it. Come on, Simon. You don't suck. You may have said that, but we don't believe it, pal. And Nate Sexton... He got away with one there, threw a perfect tee shot, throws a great putt. Unfortunately, the approach in between was less than stellar, but he knows he got away with one, and everyone's good with that. The flip in by Simon. Move 
move over to one of the shorter holes on the course, 260, but if you notice, there's still drivers being thrown, slightly uphill. <laughs> Sexton says lame, as he had missed his, his uh, alley there, and going to the opposite side of the fairway is Waisaki's backhand also missing his line. And trying to take the same line, maybe? For what? Laughing at Nate's shot. I didn't laugh. I yeah. was like, ooh. No, you, that was a laugh. No. <laughs> <laughs> Simon may want to uh, wait till he throws his shots before he tries to gently heckle any of his card mates. He took the same line as Nate. However, it looks like he got a little bit closer than Nate did. This is Nate for birdie. Not quite enough power up the hill. Simon's almost in the exact same spot. Also just a bit low, hits off the front of the cage. Drew is left with a birdie attempt. He'll convert. These guys making this 260 footer look much harder than it really is. I think all of them would love to have those tee shots back. And a few tap ins. Move on to the 15. This is a very difficult hole. If you don't get past those initial trees and that rock wall, anything short of that, I believe, or hard left of that, it can be considered out of bounds and is a very punishing out of bounds area. Sexton trying to stay clear of that. Waisaki is going to stay clear of that. This really sets up a little bit better, I feel like, for a right-handed backhand throw. However, it also then draws itself towards the OB area. And Simon Lazad does not hit the intended gap. He's going to find himself high and on the right side. Drew Gibson's going to give it a long run, but come up short. Next to throw will be Waisaki. Waisaki's going to give it a long run from way downtown. He got up and through very quickly. I just barely got there in time for it. Nate's pinched up against the trees, doesn't have quite the angle. And Lazat can give this a run from way downtown. That looked so in the whole way. Yeah, Simon, it did look in the whole way. A little tester here for Drew, still not off the hole. He'll move on from hole number 15. This hole plays very challenging for being 360, slightly downhill. With the OB into play and the angles, this whole play is very difficult for our competitors. A few tap-ins. We're going to go downhill for hole 16 coming up next. So we see seven pars in the last eight attempts from our competitors on the last two holes not seeing that anyone wants to go out and get it or finish with an incredibly stellar round at this rate Drew Gibson's gone past the basket left side Sexton's forehand sets up perfectly for this hole fades down into the right gets kind of a goofy skip that keeps him left side of the basket Waisaki would love to make an adjustment. That's also tracking down the alley you want, but then gets up and takes somewhat of a flare skip to the right. Simon Lazat could split the difference, or he might have just split some wood there. That is not going to be easy to get up and down from there. I did not see the shot coming, and then all of a sudden it was right in my face. I'm I'm glad I wasn't further out in the fairway. I may have taken that one to the head as I just never saw him release it due to the sun. Simon's trying to save a par. <laughs> and he'll do it. 
He had challenged the group if he should split the trees on the left instead for $10. And then ultimately, he said, oh, I'll throw a hyzer around them. And Nate Sexton has a nearly identical putt from almost the exact same spot and does not convert the way Simon did. Nate's, however, was for two, so they'll card the same three on this hole. And Ricky from right side, downtown. Ricky might still be mad even after the birdie. I'm not sure. Ricky has high expectations for himself out on the course. I think they're talking shoes. That's cute. So a little bit of a stall here. We have just two birdies out of the last 12 attempts by our card here. And Ricky is tight to the right side, but that's the best kick you could ask for being on that right side for it to kick out anywhere back into the fairway. And Drew Gibson has laced a drive perfectly down the center of the fairway. You said it, Nate, not me. Simon again taking the low percentage shot. I don't want to be filming anymore. I could probably reach it. Yeah, I'd be smart. Yeah. <laughs> Simon contemplating the reti. Uh And you'll see he is off to the left side. He's going to have to reach deep into his bag of tricks. And just to get out like that, and now rolling down the fairway, what a great shot. Sexton's shot is possibly underrated in every way to see how difficult that turnover forehand flick is and to get it to sit flat. And Simon's trying to do some work here. He may be able to get up and down and save a par. Why Saki wants it to sit down. It carries into the trees on the right side. And Nate's also looking just to get up and down here. It's a solid approach shot to put him right next to the pin. And Drew Gibson finally gets a chance to throw his second shot. Perfect. The par is no good for Simon, and Ricky has obstruction, but no big deal. He'll card his second birdie in a row. You want to go, Simon, or you want me to go? go Making him work a little bit for it. Nate Sexton's happy that he's going to get up and down and take the par and walk away. Simon, after launching it into the woods, just a little tap in with his driver. He's going to move on with a bogey. And Drew with the birdie. Looks like Ricky's trying to put it together here for this back nine. Getting the last two. He's three down thus far on the back nine. Ricky is your four-time champion at this tournament. Essentially undefeated at any time he's played in Vermont. And a great shot using all the fairway by Drew Gibson. Sexton with a roller, which there's really no one better in the world to throw a roller. I just still question that shot in that case. But I don't, not as much as Simon, who again goes for the superhero shot. First one to hit that branch. <laughs> <laughs> Says he might be the he's probably the first one to hit that branch. He gets up quickly and throws his approach. Nick Sexton has a look here after the forehand roller. Stay up. 
Drew's got easy cleanup for the birdie. Ricky Wysocki is going to do the same, so putting it together in the last three holes. That's going to move him up. And we've got a few more pars to finish. It's been great having you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed the bonus coverage. It's been an awesome time. Look forward to the live coverage on Smashbox TV. That's the Disc Golf Guy, and that was my video blog.